I want to actually make this video about monitoring basically to show you what I use to monitor stuff, monitor my temperatures, what I use when I'm in game, how I monitor stuff in game and stuff like that. So maybe you guys might actually use it also, or maybe you're already using it. I don't know. Either way, let's go. What? All right, so the first thing I use here, as you can see, yes, I have all these gadgets here. And this is uh, Crisis 3 we have loaded up here in the window mode here. It, uh, it doesn't, the resolution doesn't matter, okay? Uh, and I am... Oh, Windows 8. Yep. Oh, Windows 8. 8.1, actually. 8.1. Uh, yeah, you can see I already got some stuff installed. I got the CBS installed. I got Newegg.com. I have Netflix. I have Flappy Bird. I have Assault 8. It's not that bad. I don't use it that much. Really. Honestly, I really don't use it that much. I just stick with Windows. So when I start my computer up, this is what pops up. This is what pop this doesn't show up. This shows up. So I got the start menu, of course. Uh, if you guys want to know what kind of start menu this is, this is uh, called Start is Back. So you can go download that if you have Windows 8, 8.1. Uh, there's different versions. Of course, it's only $3. It'll be the best $3 you ever spend in your entire life. You have the option to basically choose whatever stuff button you want, of course. The style here. Um, you can, when I, when I log on to my PC, you can show the desktop or the start screen. Uh, when I close a modern app, whatever. When I press whatever. If I press multiple key combinations, I can bring it back to start menu. I have control and start, which would, of course, is right here. When I hold the start key. Hmm. Nah. All right. <laughs> so that's it. Um, of course, this is activated. A 10 guy didn't show the activation key. That'll be. Okay, it's only three bucks. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, this right here, gadgets. Of course, you're like, oh shit, Fabian, you Windows 8 when you have gadgets? Well, yes, that's available for Windows. Of course, yeah, I'm on Netflix, guys. I'm on Netflix. Okay. And this is why I'm like, look at look my RAM usage 6.3 gigs of RAM being used right now. And this is the reason why I'm a heavy multitasker. Absolutely have I, I was, it was like 15 tabs right here and I got this little thing open here with the things I'm going to show you guys and multiple tabs open here. Sometimes I'll have like two, sometimes I'll have all these browsers open. I open up IE, I open up um, Firefox and I'm playing the game. Like absolutely heavy. I, I think in the future I'm, it, what is he even about? What is he even about? Oh, come on. Okay, we were talking about um, Plants vs. Zombies is actually available on for, for now for like 72 hours game time but yes let me get off contraband all right anyway uh so what this is gadgets here this is the uh windows 8 gadgets pack you can download it version 11 is available um you can download it install it and you can have your gadgets this will come in handy here's why let me get to that right now so i use gadgets i have core temp for monitoring the CPU temperatures and what frequency it's at. Right now it's at four gigahertz and it's not clocking down. So I'm gonna have to go back into the BIOS and check that out because I have the, I don't, know, I don't, I don't remember what it's called, uh, the advanced something about something. I don't remember the name right now, but it's supposed to fluctuate. The, the, the frequency is supposed to fluctuate and not stay at four gigahertz all the time. Cause that's, that's gonna be sucking up a lot of power AMD is not forgiven when it comes to that. So I use gadgets, I use um, core temp, um, and I use, where is it? Here we go, MSI Afterburner. Very, very important. Uh, when it comes to monitoring uh, your in-game, your game, like, okay, core temp, you can't see anything on the game. You can, the only thing core temp allow you to do, um, well, actually it doesn't. The only thing it allow you to do is do this right here. So I've got the CPU usage and the temperature, uh, basically, and you can set the option to actually alert you, like an alarm will go off if it exceeds a certain temperature. That's awesome. That's great, right? Everyone should have that. I'm going to show you how to set that up. Um, and with MSI Afterburner and Reva 
tuner statistics. This is really important. You need this to have the on-screen display uh, like this right there. As you can see, that's popping up and off right there in the corner of the screen, which tells me all the information about what's going on in the game on the graphics card side. Uh, the frames per second, what Dark X mode is using, the, what is it called? Uh, the frame time, which is 16.6 .6 MS, lower is better. Um, the RAM, that's actually the computer's RAM, this RAM, okay? Uh, GPU, the temperature is 49 Celsius, 12% usage, and it's at 1.10 uh, megahertz, which is about 1.1 gigahertz. Uh, and it'll go up to, up to 1.2. And you got the memory here, which is the effective memory uh, for the graphics card, which is at 31, 32 megahertz. And it's using 770 megabytes of RAM. So, that's a 1700 or 700? 770 megabytes of RAM. You see that right there. Uh, so that's very, very important. I'm gonna get how to set that up. I also use uh, Core Temp, which comes in handy uh, for my cell phone. So you can see right here, you probably can't see it, but I don't know. Uh, you can see right here, that's that's Core Temp. That's everything, all information displaying. And this is the only way I'm, I'm able to actually see the utilization levels. Really what I care more about. I don't have this really for temperature based because it doesn't go that high. Um, maybe in some case it might eventually after a year or two or whatever, uh, it might get really hot and it'll alert me, the alarm will go off. Like, why is it getting so hot all of a sudden? Something went wrong, um, so maybe something came loose, the heat sink came a little loose because that did happen to me one time before and the temperature just skyrocketed the crap out. Anyway, um, so it'll show me the, the load utilization and stuff like that on the, the, the processor and this could help me determine whether or not I'm CPU limited or not. So I'll show you right now how to set all that up. Um, so first things first, whew, all right. Uh, first things first, you download MSI after burner, you install it. it. That should prompt you to install Reaver Tuner Statistics Server or whatever, um, or you can download it, this version right here. This is the latest version for all these websites can be included in the description. So you download uh, Reaver, uh, MSI after burner first, by going to the, uh, the, the, the website and then you go to download and download MS Afterburner. Wow, really? Are you serious right now? You're kidding me. <laughs> it's not working. Oh, damn. I'm so sorry for you guys. Anyway, it might come back up in a couple of a, a day, maybe, maybe this afternoon, maybe by the time the video is uploaded, it should work. That's crazy, it's not working. Uh, so, and you're gonna, well, I don't really use that remote server thing. I get in, well, I should probably, should probably get into it right now. Uh, which, this, this will allow you to basically, uh, an application you could download on your cell phone, tablet, whatever, and be able to basically overclock the CPU through the application or somewhat, you could basically monitor it, but the UI is, no, it's not that great. Uh, for monitoring um, the GPU load and GPU temperature, which you can already do that already with MSI Afterburner and the Weaver Tuner. Um, I don't really see too much of a purpose for that. So once you download MSI Afterburner and you install, it should an, another setup should prompt you, and I can't even download it right now. Another setup should prompt you to install Weaver Tuner. You can install that, and then you go to this. If it's the latest version, it's version 6.12. Or if you don't know, you download this anyway on this website and then you go ahead and you install it. And once you install it, uh, you're gonna go, make sure your game's not running, okay? Just don't run your game. Uh, make sure your game's not running, go into the MSI Afterburner, click on settings, all right? Click start with Windows, start minimized. Um, only have one GPU anyway, so you can check that box if you want to, to synchronize the settings with familiar, gra familiar graphics cards um, and that is pretty much it for this one. You're gonna go over to the fan profile, tune in, you can tune your fan profile to basically, um, when the temperature gets higher, the fan profile, the, the fan will ramp up higher. Depends on what you wanna set it. Uh, the highest I have here is 80% 80, 80 fan speed at, eight, at 75 Celsius. So once it goes to 75 Celsius, the fan will ramp up all the way to um, 80%. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, because the stock, like if I turn this off, my GPU will go all the way up to 90, possibly. It used to go all the way up to 90. With it on, it goes to about 80, 80 degrees, 82 around there. Uh, not much higher than that. 
so that helps. But now that I, oh, I undervolted my graphics card, I'm getting like in the 70, 75, so that's great also. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm gonna tell you in another video about over undervolting your graphics card. Anyway, um, this is where we're coming on to right now. This is the on-screen display. I have this set to the number key, uh, number pad, plus pad, which will turn it on and off. So when I press the, pu the plus, right? God damn it, seriously, it's not working? Because I'm in the settings and I have to burn it. Okay, that's why it's not working, because this is on. So when I press this, I'll toggle the on-screen display, whether it's on and off, whatever key you want to press, it will turn it on or off. Um, we're gonna move, where is it? Monitoring. Whoops, I went from there to on-screen display. Anyway, uh, monitoring is what you want to come to next. Um, you want to definitely check. This is what, this is what important. It'll allow you to see the on-screen display. You got your frame rate. You press that, and then you check the box to show on-screen display. So they're the same thing. Uh, you got CPU. This is this for your, your. This is your CPU utilization. You want to see that in there? Sure, if you want to check it. Boom. Uh, once it says in on-screen display, uh, that's what OSD means. On-screen display. And that will show up there too. I don't want that. Ill. I have the RAM checked. I have the GPU temperature checked. Uh, I have the GPU usage checked. This is important for me to let me know if I'm about to hit that limit of my graphical settings. I'll show you that in a minute. With Crisis 3 here. Um, got the core clock. I like that in there. I got the memory clock. Mm, not as important. Depends on you. Uh, and I have the memory usage, which is important to me, of course. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all that needs to be checked. So for me, if you want, you can check out things if you want to. Um, other than that, I mean, you want to change the big, you want to change the skin. You would, you that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can change the skin with this right here. So bigger or whatever. Um, and that's it for that. I don't even use this to capture my gameplays. I use Nvidia um, Shadow Play, um, or you could use the AMD uh, equivalent. If you want to, uh, this works with both graphics cards, AMD and Nvidia. It doesn't matter. Uh, so here we are. All right. So you see, it's set on auto right there. Uh, that's for the fan tuning, the fan profile thing. It's on auto. Um, so I'm gonna narrow this down. Here we are. Plus, there we go. So you can see 12% usage on the GPU. So we're gonna do. God damn it. We're gonna start all over. God damn it. Origin. Gotta do this to her brother. Shut up, don't make fun of me. No, no tutorial, please. Anyway, so you can see here, this is with uh, the MSI Afterburner. All this is working with the MSI Afterburner and the Reaver Tuner Statistics. Um, and once you press your hotkey, that'll come on. Now, if you want, when you come, when it comes on, it'll be all the way up here. Now, if you wanna modify that, you can go into your, uh, let's see here. Where is the Reaver Tuning Statistic thingy at? Ooh, no, 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 no. Is that, yeah, okay, so, so it's already open right here. So you'll go in right here and then you'll see it right, oh damn. Okay, sure, yeah, here it is, right here. So it says 60 right there. I got so many things in there. Uh, so it says 60 right there, you just double click on that. And um, this is the statistics, uh, Tuner thing that'll uh, basically assist with, but without this software, that on-screen display is not going to work. So make sure you press select start on Windows, um, show on screen display, and I set this to high. I leave that off. Leave that off. Frame rate. This is beautiful. Now the Reaver Tuner statistics is both 32-bit and most 64-bit compatible. You can limit your frame rate on your game. So this way, uh, your graphics card is cooler. You lose that. You use less power. And you don't render frame rate you can't see. But it depends on your monitor. If your monitor is 60 hertz, then you lock it. I, I lock mine to 60 uh, FPS. So the frame rate is locked at 60 frames, as you can see right here. Um, if I have a 120 hertz monitor, then I'm going to basically lock it at 120 20 frames per second. Or if you overclock your monitor um, to 80, uh, 85 hertz, 80 hertz, or 90 hertz, whatever, lock it to whatever. Uh, heard your monitor is uh, and uh, right down here you could basically see I have this on for shadow because without it it's like if you look up into somewhere that's blue basically it's this is gonna blend in and you, you have the option to change the color of course and you have the option to uh, I think that's it yeah this is the zoom level 
of course. I live there right there. Uh, so now, so once that's done, uh, basically, um, that's pretty much it. Now you can, God, can you, can you, uh, I'm gonna get like 11% usage. I'm trying to, I guess I'll just wait. That's fast forwarded. All right, so as you can see, uh, it's working, but it's not working as, as I would like. You can see that the CPU utilization is going up and that will basically show that on here also. So you can see everything that's going on. It's going up and yes. So I basically take my phone, I rest it on my keyboard and I can see the utilization that's going on there. Um, so I'm getting 8% and it's at 45 frames a second. I'm probably gonna have to go full screen on this one right here. If you don't say all tab. Nope. Nope. Okay, all time turn. Come on. Oh! Only took a couple clicks. Alright, now keep in mind I'm running at, uh, what is it, 1400 by 900, I believe. There is no volume. The volume has been turned down. So. I can't, everything got reset to default. Oh my lord. Oh man. All right, so we are getting 51, 54 frames a second. This is very intense with all the rain and everything happening. Very beautiful game. And as you can see over there, you see the CPU temperature, the, the GPU uh, that is, is, is running in DirectX 11, DED 11. So that shows that it runs in DirectX 11. It's at 59.9 frames per second, 16.6 .6 MS re response time. RAM usage is still at 6.8 uh, gigs. Oh God, <laughs> I pretty much copying out there. GPU temperature is 65 Celsius. GPU utilization is 93%. And it's running at 1.2 gigahertz instead of 1.250 megahertz. And it's using uh, 1688 megahertz. Now the 13, 31, 32 megahertz, that's only gonna change if you overclock your graphics cards and memory. Uh, and I have the overclock slightly. So, here we are, we're playing. And definitely, I'm not even at 1080p, and we're gonna get like 50 frames a second. And you can see the GPU utilization is kinda of high. So, 98%. So if I go back, go into the settings here, and I change the uh, graphics settings says I'm very high, so I put this on like say medium, medium, medium. Put everything on medium. Just okay. Is there like an all option thing? Okay. No, I don't like. I really don't even like motion blur, honestly. Oh, let's put that on medium. This is a GTX 680. Yes, yes it is. I'm gonna apply it. You see that's gonna jump around. That is not gonna go over 60 frames a second, and now the GPU load is at 70% of medium settings. And this will allow for smoother uh, gameplays. So let's say an explosion were to happen right now. I know that at 70% utilization, when an explosion happens, it's gonna jump above 70. It's gonna jump to maybe 80, 90, 95. Uh, and if it goes over 99, or tries to go more than 99, the frame rate is going to drop. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is pretty smooth right now, as you can see. Not playing at 1080p, I'm playing at, uh, oh God, I don't remember the, the resolution. I think it's 900p. Uh, so, on medium settings. So I use this as a reference. Who's that? Oh, that's the guy I'm supposed to be following. Ew. Well, about, almost shot him in the face. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's running just fine, of course, 55%. Uh, of course, every area is different. If you want ultra smooth gameplay, uh, keep your, make sure you monitor your, um, your GPU usage percentage. You know, you don't want, if you're getting 60 frames a second and you're at 99% uh, GPU utilization, you're definitely gonna drop. You're gonna see when explosions start happening, a lot more people comes onto the screen. The more things it has to render, that frame rate is gonna drop because the GPU is already tanked out already. So it can't go any higher than that. So I uh, definitely watch that. I use that as a guideline to set up my games um, so I can get good, smooth gameplay. I leave a little bit ahead of room for anything crazy that might happen, multiple explosions and whatnot. Um, and there have been some cases, that, well, it's gonna happen in all cases 
when you're in a game, you got 60%, all of a sudden a big explosion happens and you'll see the GPU utilization go from like 60% to 80%. Um, and when that happens, you'll continue to maintain 60 frames a second, unless it wants more than that. So that is a great guideline for me. And that's pretty much it for that. Um, so now I'm gonna show you how to set up Core Temp on your cell phone for monitoring on your cell phone. Uh, so first we're gonna start, we gotta set up a, a custom IP address. This could get a little bit technical. All right, it's a little bit technical anyway. Um, so basically uh, you just, uh, okay, back up. Uh, you basically right click, open network insurance, blah, blah, blah. Go to the uh, change adapter settings. Um, I'm on ethernet, so I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. So I right click, status, details, and this is my computer's IP address. That's how you easily find it. This is the easy way to find what IP address is on your computer. So either you, you can go on your cell phone on the Google App Store and you can just download the app and this is the free version, this is the paid version. The paid version uh, offers no ads. The free version, you have ads inside of it. So that's your choice, wherever you wanna go, whatever you wanna take. Um, and this is this is a custom IP address that's been set up for me. So this IP address will always stay the same. It's not gonna change ever. It's never gonna change. No matter what I do, I reboot the modem, I reboot the computer, it doesn't matter. It's gonna always be 192.168.1.50, okay? And your default gateway is important to know also because that's what's involved in setting this up. Now, some of you, it depends on what router you have, it's gonna be different. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna set this up first before I actually show you how to do the core temp thing first. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into properties. We're gonna go into, let's keep this in mind. Let's, let's keep the detail about crap. Let's keep this up here. Up, oh, can't do it. All right, so let's write this down, the default gateway uh, IP address. And that's all default gateway and the subnet mask. Those two are very, 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 very important. All right, so write those down. And then you go into, uh, you should uh, you go back into properties and then you go into the internet protocol version four uh, and double click that. And yours will be automatic. Yours will be right here where it says update an automatic IP address, or whatever. So if I do the opposite, I got deleted. Um, so basically you want to use the following IP address and this is obviously, once you use the, uh, a custom IP address, you have to use a custom DNS server. I'll give you Google's DNS server, um, which you probably already saw. So your IP address, whatever you want. Um, basically, I would go 192.168.1. whatever. Oops, all right, <laughs> 1.225, or um, pretty much right in that range, I'll stay right there. I'm sure you can change this one here to like five, that uh, whatever number you want, 48, um, it's your IP address. Uh, so I haven't tested like changing this from a different number and this to a different number, but I'm sure anything will work, possibly. Um, but this is it, I'll just keep it as 192.168.1.50. Subject app mask, when you click on it, a default one might appear. Um, when you click on the gateway, this is the default gateway, whatever your gateway is, 192. Mine is 192.168.1.1. That's my default gateway. Yours might be 192.168.1.2 or whatever. Told you to write that down. That's what you're gonna be using. And Google's DNS server is 88888844. That is Google's DNS server. You press okay. And that's not gonna pop up. It might pop up. If it shouldn't pop up, unless you have like multiple of these set up and you probably have like both of them in custom uh, set up as, as custom big, um, IP addresses. So that's not gonna pop up. Um, so if it does, write me a message. I'm gonna have to do another video on how to clear that up. Uh, you just press okay. Of course, God damn it. Yes, if, if it does ask you to say yes and um, I said, press OK again and close. If you do have an issue or your internet cuts off because you press the yes button, 
um, look at your other networks and make sure that uh, they are not using anything custom or anything like that. I don't know why this is why that's there, honestly. So weird. All right, see, I'm gonna do that and okay. Let me try and redo this and see if it, it changes, if it's gonna affect, if it's gonna ask me for it to pop up or whatever. See, nothing happened. It didn't ask me, the pop up didn't happen. So it shouldn't happen for you. It should not happen for you unless you have like a wired connection and wireless connection and you use them for both custom IP addresses. That's not gonna work. You can create a conflict. And your internet can get disconnected. So let's make sure that is set. Anyway, uh, moving on. Now that we got that backend set up, we know our IP addresses now is uh, 192.168.1.50. Uh, uh, you can get that either way by right clicking in status and details and it'll show you which IP address is to the computer. Uh, from there, you are going to go on to, oops, wrong one. You're gonna go onto the uh, Core Temp and you're gonna download Core Temp 1.0 RC6, uh, release candidate six, download that, install it. Then after that, you're gonna have to download the uh, plugins for the remote server, which is, should be somewhere here. Right here. Core temp monitor now available. Stick here. Yep. And you basically just download it. Core temp remote, remote server. Which this should be it. Start download. I'm just gonna show it to you so you guys open. And this is it. So wherever you install core temp, I don't know where you install core temp, but mine is at the local drive. Uh, it might be installed in default uh, C program files, x86. It should be somewhere right in there. Uh, I might say Core Temp. Uh, but I use a portable version of Core Temp. And so find wherever your Core Temp folder is and double click on it and create a new folder. You're gonna have to, this, is, this is not gonna be here. So you right click, click on new, create a new folder, call it plugins. And when you go to plugins, create, right click, create a new folder and create Core Temp remote server folder. When you open that up, you're gonna take all of these right here that you just downloaded and you drag it over there. Once that is done, you make sure Core Temp is not running. If it is running, close it down. And go to File, or go to uh, Settings, Options, Settings, um, and click on Enable Plugins, and start Core Temp with Windows. Um, and that should be it, right? Let's see, yep, that should be it. Click apply, okay. And then you're going to go into your phone. you're going to add a new IP address. I'll, like to, I'll tell you to add a new one. And you're basically going to uh, type in whatever name you want to call it. You can call it home computer, gaming computer, and then you type in the host name, which is your IP address, 192.168.1, whatever you have, whatever your IP address is. You put that in there, you use the default port as 5200. You press save. And then you might have to click and hold it and click connect or it might connect automatically. And that's it. You can now monitor your core information, all the CPU information, utilization load, and temperature right all on your, um, your cell phone. So, yep, I think that pretty much concludes this video. Some other boards, some people, you know, you buy some other boards that allow you to have um, a software that you can actually download or it might come with your CD. 
I wouldn't use a CD though, I would use the internet, the, the browser, the official website, and they would allow you to monitor other instances on your the computer, other areas uh, on your PC. Um, so, like, I have the thermal radar because I have an Asus Sabertooth motherboard. It comes with a software that allows me to monitor additional temperatures, uh, motherboard temperature, the CPU temperature, which I believe, which would actually be the socket temperature. Um, of it, which my limit for the AMD M3 Plus uh, socket is actually 70 Celsius, right around there. 70 Celsius. I don't want to exceed that. You got the V Core, you got the uh, North Bridge, you got the RAM, the DRAM socket, and socket. You got the USB, a PCI. Um, these aren't actual. These are like on the board itself. They're not like taken from the card or anything like that. It's on the board itself. So. And you can do other things like modify this fan speed and like over oh, possibly think overclock. It just depends on your software and the motherboard that you have that allows you to do additional things. Um, other than that, for overclocking, what I do use, I use uh, ooh, get it, get it, go away. How do I monitor? So it can tell me my cores and all that stuff and um, hard drives temperatures and whatnot. Graphics cards, uh, temperatures and voltages and whatnot. Um, so I use this only for overclocking. So I'll tell you what my V core is, the voltage and everything is. It's all another video, okay? Uh, so I think this, that pretty much covers it. That pretty much covers it. If you sat through it, now you know more. So yes, definitely. I do have the monitor here on the desktop, but it doesn't show the GPU clock and the memory is wrong the memory utilization is wrong and but the temperature is correct i do believe so it is correct there's gpz start up real quick all right um if you don't know what gpz is it allows you to monitor your graphics card and see what kind of graphics card it is and the specs of it and what it has in the graphics card and you can monitor the frequency the memory clock and the temperature it is again yeah it is correct the fan speed, the memory utilization, everything, all of that, the video engine load, goddamn this high. Cause like I got I got so many videos open right now on these browser. I got like at least three maybe videos open that I'm gonna get to right after I'm finished rendering this video. Um, so hopefully this isn't boring. Obviously, if if you wanted to watch this video, you're gonna you're gonna watch it um, to know and to really see that and whatnot. Um, so if you want another option to monitor like for the game frame rates um i mean amazon after burn already shows you all the information you can probably just select one at a time or whatever uh, if you want to but it already shows you that you can use fraps or i use um even to record the cap this video right now i'm actually using nvidia's um shadow play to actually capture this the screen and the capture gameplays and whatnot. I use um, Shadow Play to do that. It's not gonna open. It's open. Oh, it took you forever. Uh, so now here it is, and Shadow Play, and it's doing. I can't do any changes right now because it's actually uh, captured the video. So I use that, and it works really, really well so far. Even if it's still it's still, it's still in beta, it works well. Um, other than that, you have Fraps. I'm gonna use that to really benchmark games now. I'm gonna think I wanna get into that and you know show off what the, the, my computer can do because I don't have really any other hardware. I have a, a Phenom 2 uh, 965, which is a three gigahertz, four core, and a 5770, another rig uh, downstairs. And uh, it's, it's all I have right now. Uh, so I think my next video I'm gonna do is actually show you guys how to. Uh, modify your BIOS and undervolting. I wouldn't recommend overvolting. I don't think it's worth it personally to to overvolt your graphics card. If you can undervolt your graphics card and maintain the same clock, that is a high win. So I think that'll be my next video. So thank you guys for watching. If you do understand, hopefully you guys aren't confused or I didn't get confused. Well, I didn't confuse you guys. Maybe it's some things you didn't understand. If not, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to clarify that for you or we make the video because hopefully, I'm gonna have to watch it and see how well it is because this video is probably going on for probably 30 minutes now. 
So yes, hopefully you guys enjoyed and take care.